So guys, that was probably a little bit over dramatic, but the point I'm trying to make is that email can be a blessing or a curse. If, like me, a few years ago, you have an inbox that has gone completely out of control, has thousands of messages, and even you have multiple inboxes, this is for you. I'm gonna show you five quick ways that you can quickly take back control of your email. Thanks and keep watching. Number one, and this one sounds pretty obvious, but it's a lot trickier than you'd think, unsubscribe. So how many emails do you get from newsletters, websites that you sign up for that you could very easily unsubscribe and do without for the rest of your life? Probably most of them. We get an awful lot of spam and an awful lot of junk, and there's probably a huge amount of these clogging up your inbox, so why not unsubscribe? Again, the same argument comes to people's minds. Well, it takes time, and I have to sit down and do it, and I have to go through my inbox. Yeah, absolutely, but why not filter everything by sender? You'll see a whole load of these things in one block, and all you need to do is unsubscribe from one of them, and then you have the choice of either deleting them or moving them into a folder. And for anyone who says, I don't have the time to do this, ask yourself now, how many times are you sitting on the sofa at the end of the day watching Netflix or lying in bed browsing through Instagram? This is time you could be using to do that. It takes a little while, but once you've done it, I guarantee you it will make your inbox an awful lot more responsive. It'll make your inbox an awful lot more clean and clear. So I highly recommend sitting down, taking the time, unsubscribe. It will make all the difference. Number two, Multiple signatures. So people are asking me, well, why would I have multiple signatures? I just need one signature. Yeah, probably you only need one signature, but you can also use signatures as templates. So when you click on the signature dropdown box from whatever email client that you're using, you could have pre-made templates that drop into your email. Now you can do templates with an awful lot of email programs, but what I found over the years is there are some emails that I send that need to include personal details like mobile phone number, maybe address, etc. But the majority of the mails that I send, I don't want people having these. So I have multiple signatures. And rather than having to type these out every time, I just select a slightly different version of my signature that has these. But you can take that one step further. If you know that you're going to be stock replying certain things to people all the time, put those into a signature as well. And rather than having to muck around creating templates, it's literally just a click of signature and pow, there you have it. You have a stock reply or a template or whatever else that drops in at the end of your email. Trust me, when you get into the habit of this and create multiple signatures and multiple templates like these, it really does make a difference. If you're used to your email clients and you know how to use the templates, absolutely do that too. But multiple signatures is a great way of making sure you don't send the wrong information to the wrong person and you're not stuck with one signature for absolutely every mail that you send. It's a simple one, but it can make all the difference. Number three, and this one's a little bit more tricky. So this is 24 hour reply. So now that you're trying to get your email under control, the point of this is that your email is more effective and more useful, not only for you, but the people who are receiving these emails. So get into the habit of replying to every email within 24 hours. Now you can do this 24 working hours if you need to or whatever, but trust me, particularly in a work environment for a work email, people do notice the difference and they respond much, much better. There is nothing worse than being in work and waiting for somebody else to reply. So at the very least, if you reply to everything within 24 hours, even just to say, I've read that, I'll get back to you with more detail when I can, people do appreciate that. Same thing with personal email. I mean, I'm sure we all have people who email us from time to time and we just probably ignore them for most of the day and we take to WhatsApp or to Facebook Messenger or whatever else. If somebody takes the time to send you an email, take the time to reply. Even if only to say, I've got that, I will get back to you. It makes a huge difference for the recipient on the other end to get that personalized message from you. Number four, timed email. So this one obviously makes more sense for people in work where you're trying to strike that balance between work and life, where you'd have out of offices on the weekend or whatever it is. You can actually do this with all your email and your personal email as well. So why not set it so that email only comes in from mailboxes at a certain time or take that one step further where you actually have your email set to manual. And what this means is you actually have to physically go in on your phone, pull down or hit refresh to get the emails in. This is great because you're out with friends, you're at the cinema, you don't want to be interrupted with the ding, 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 ding of emails. And it also shows that, you know, you can separate what's going on on your email from what's going on in your real life. 
To be honest, I would highly recommend people doing this for Messenger, for WhatsApp, for everything else. But I know in today's connected world, I'm probably talking to people who are gonna go, no, I'm never gonna do that. I want, I want to have that constant communication. But realistically, email is not as instant as instant messaging. So why do you need to constantly have that ding, ding, ding? Plus, if most of it is spam and newsletters and junk anyway, why not just have it so that you manually get those when you're sitting in front of the Netflix or when you're sitting in front of the TV so you can control when they come in? Number five, and this one is the trickiest, it's what's called inbox zero. So as the name suggests, this is a system for keeping zero items in your inbox. It's a tough one and really you need to have mastered some of the other techniques that we've talked about here before you can implement inbox zero. But the idea is that if you've unsubscribed to all those newsletters, if you filtered out all your spam, you've deleted everything that you don't need, you take the stuff that you do need to keep and you put it into folders. And you take everything out of your inbox and you put it into these folders. And the idea then is if you are replying to emails immediately. When an email comes in, you read it, you send a quick reply and you decide two things. Do I need to keep this in my inbox? If so, I'm keeping it in my inbox as a to-do item or a to-do list. So everything that's in your inbox when you go in there is stuff that you're going back to say, I need to do something about this. If it's something that you've already replied fully to and you don't need to follow up, drag it into a folder and it's done and dusted. That way you get it so that the inbox either has zero items or anything that is in your inbox is a to-do item for you to follow up on. Do this over time, takes a while as I said, but do this over time and you will get to a stage whereby your inbox becomes your to-do list. It also means that when your phone does bing or ding or whatever it is for your email to come in, you are more confident that the message that's coming in is important or that you do need to read. And if it's not, you can just throw it into another folder or delete it, your choice, um, and that's it. It's done, it's actioned and your inbox is empty. Trust me guys, I've been doing this for the last few years and I've gone from receiving literally hundreds of emails a day across six different inboxes to now when I'm out of work, I get very, very few emails and the ones that do come in are the ones that I do want to read. They're from family, they're from friends, or they're from companies that I do want to hear from, you know, updates on Amazon Audible offers and stuff like that. And that's stuff that's important or updates on billing or payments for, you know, utility bills. And that's stuff I do need to keep on, on top of. So guys, I highly recommend taking these five, five simple things. They do take a little bit of time to implement, but you will notice a huge difference. And I've got to the stage now whereby my inbox is empty at the end of every day. My inbox is timed, so I don't get emails when I don't want them to. I have different signatures then to reply given different circumstances or different types of recipients. And hey presto, I've taken back control of my inbox and you can too. So guys, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give me an old subscribe. There it is. Uh, give me an old subscribe. Please share this with people who you think are struggling with their inbox. I know plenty of people who say to me every day, oh look at my inbox, I have 1600 emails. This can be done. Yet you're gonna sit down in front of the TV and do it. You don't need to spay, take time to action these things or get this done. All you need is a couple of hours when you're watching a movie where you're probably gonna be texting your mates or checking Instagram anyway to go through these little steps, unsubscribe from everything, put everything in folders, and trust me, it makes a huge difference. Plus, people will appreciate more that when an email comes in, you've seen it, you action it, you reply to it. Absolutely, guys, it's a fantastic way of looking after your inbox. So guys, I hope you found this useful and I will see you next time. Goodbye.